your job again. You're supposed to remind me to record. See, the Lord didn't want me saying that on a recording. That's what it was. Don't forget to set your chat to all panelists and attendees so you can connect with everybody. Hey, Nicole. Hey, Cleo. Hey, Christy. Hey, everybody. Bible says, greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. My interpretation, greater is he who is within me than that Krispy Kreme donut. That's some good teaching and preaching right there, Miss Cleo, who's down. I always forget the number. It starts running, but I think like 80 or 100 pounds or something. She's done remarkable. What a mighty spirit warrior she is. All right, we're recording. I'm about to pull up the PowerPoint. When the PowerPoint's up, I have a more difficult time seeing the chat. But it will come out. I will answer questions. Make sure you write questions down. Yes, this is basic training because repetition is the mother of skill. You need to hear this stuff over and over and over until it, you just know it. I mean, you want to be able to see uh, the Roman numerals, you know, the categories you want to be on. You go to Red Lobster and you sit down and see a plate. You want, a big, you want Roman numerals to be able to float above the plate. You know it so well. In other words, you're having some shrimp, scampi, and some broccoli. You want to see a seven floating above it plus a two floating above it. And then the seven turns into a four because there's bad fats cooked into the shrimp. Right, right? Y'all got it? And you want to see a diet devil floating above the Cheddar Bay biscuits, you know. So when you get to that point, you know something. All right. Hey, Sandy Parson is with us tonight. Good to have Sandy. At one point, Sandy lost 260 pounds, and he had a little little, little relapse, but he's back on. He's back on. Proud of him. It's not – you know, righteous people will fall, but the difference between the righteous and the wicked is the righteous get back up. Sandy's righteous, so I knew he'd get back up. All right, so let me share my screen. Hang on. Dag on it. I hate silence. Hold on. Let me get this thing up. Sorry, guys. I thought I had it up before I came on here. There it is. Nope, oh, no, that's a grocery tour. Y'all don't want the grocery tour tonight. That's not what we do until nine o'clock. Y'all working me to death around here. Uh oh. Y'all give me just a minute. Something's happened to my PowerPoint. Ain't that, ain't that, ain't that just life? Ain't it just life? Y'all just sing or something. Sorry about that. My PowerPoint, like, stopped. I didn't know what happened. Hey, everybody. Come on, Jennifer. You can do it. You can do it. And again, I, I get mistaken all the time. For uh, I, say, I say things, I say things and it, it gets, it comes out wrong. I'm, when I talk to Jennifer, I'm talking to myself. Somebody had said not long ago, if we can't share our struggles in the group, that, you know, they had a negative moment. And I said something, that without even looking at their post that they thought was referencing them. And it was about talking about struggling all the time. Let me tell you something about that. Your struggle is real. But the more you talk about it, the more compounded it is. Instead of saying this is hard, before we get, I got the PowerPoint up, but I want to help Jennifer. Because this is what helped me. It's hard to do because we... We want people to know our pain, and we do want them to pay, pray for us. We should acknowledge what's wrong. But here's what I've learned about how the devil works. If he can get us thinking struggle, and he can get us saying struggle, it's a foregone conclusion that we're going to struggle. In fact, our words are so powerful. Our words are so powerful when we say, I'm struggling. We just multiplied our struggle times two. It become God has given us that power. We're creating his image and likeness. When we say I'm it took me forever to get this. When I'm struggling, I better and I'll still mess up and say that from time to time, but I'm gonna come back with two or three powerful phrases 
to counter that. Not just to counterbalance it, to counter it. Because here's what's happening. You got a lifetime of thinking, I'm struggling, I'm fat, I'm ugly, whatever your thing is, that was mine. You got a lifetime of thinking that. You might go through a hundred negative thoughts about yourself and only one positive thing. That hundred is going to overwhelm the one positive. I've learned to change that. <laughs> where if I slip up and I say something, I'm struggling, or I'm, man, I just, I just ain't got it. I just, I just no good at this. Whatever it is, I'm going to catch it. I'm like, ooh, no, no, I'm good at this. I'm better than most people at this. I am a good looking guy. I, I'm, I'm smart. I'm intelligent. Because then that becomes, you begin to behave that way. It becomes a self-fulfilling type of thing in prophecy. But we've been tricked and duped into being so negative and, and living in struggle. You, you may very well be in reality struggling. But my point is, talking about it doesn't move you any further forward. I can prove it with a quick exercise. If I say, this is so hard, I might do it anyway. But if I say this is so hard, that's not true, and it demotivates me. If I say this is easy, then it motivates me, and that statement isn't true either. It's no more true. It's to say this is easy is no more true than saying it's hard. But one statement helps me move closer to my goal. These types of things are the hardest things for a person to change. They've been the hardest thing for me to change. They'll be the hardest thing for you to change. I can lose it. I'm going to lose it fast. I'm going to lose it easy. I may not feel that way in the moment, but when I proclaim that over and over and over, man, it's like Rocky in that movie. I know I got to get with it, but I'm trying to help Jennifer. It's like Rocky in that movie. If you've ever seen the Rocky, Rocky two, he gets knocked down in like the second round and he gets so mad and he hits the canvas and he goes over to the corner and Mickey says something to him. He says, I ain't going down no more. You got to have that attitude. That's what it, that's what it takes. Wendy just did it. See, here, here's the thing. I'm in love. I'm preaching to y'all. Wendy just did the same thing after hearing me on this five-minute rant. And the devil would tell me, why do you even talk about it? Just give them the nutrition and hope that they do it. Just hope they do it. Because nobody's listening. Because like Wendy, look at what she just said. She didn't just say it. Bear with me, Wendy. Don't get mad at me. Wendy didn't just say it over here in the chat. She wrote it. That makes it worse. She's proclaiming, I am my own enemy. I am my worst enemy. Self-fulfilling prophecy. I used to do the same thing to the point that it's another life principle here. People abused me. I didn't understand why people abused me because I abused myself. So now, you know what? This is, I got everything to do with weight loss. Now I'm my best friend. That's my wife. She, she's, She's my, outside of me, she's my best friend. But you know who my best friend is? Jesus and me. That's my best friend. I'm going to make me happy. <laughs> anyway, I'm just, I guess I'm just ranting. I'm just trying to help y'all. When you record it, you ought to write down right now, just let me know, Wendy, just to let, let me know you did not discount everything I said by writing you that you're your own worst enemy. You should say, I'm my own best friend. I'm my own best friend. I'm my own best friend to counterbalance that negative words you give to yourself. <laughs> Freed says, I've been back seven days down six pounds. That's awesome. That is awesome. Andrea, this is the easiest lifestyle I have ever done. We all can do this. Amen. It is the easiest thing, isn't it? A lot to it in the first two or three weeks, but after you, you put a little investment of time in there, you got it. And, it's like riding a bike after that. And then you just keep learning and growing. So I'm going to click play and we're going to get started. Share. All right. Here we go. Basic training. Basic training. I'll make sure you take notes. You may have some questions. 
All right, let's, let's hear some repetitious teaching. We won't spend an overt amount of time on this stuff, even though I think it's the most important. Spend some time documenting who you are. This goes to what we've just been talking on. Write down, I am beautiful, I am strong, I am lean. I'm a child of the king. I'm more than a conqueror. Um, by faith, I can move mountains. That's the kind of person I am. I'm a self-disciplined freak. All the things that you are not and want to be, write those down and record those. You see, if you'll do that, it's like what the Bible tells. Anybody believe in the Bible anymore? You believe it's the word of God and it has power? If you have faith when you read it and act on it, well, the Bible tells us that we should call forth and forward the things that are not as though they already are. So what you need to do is like the woman in the little mirror in the illustration, you need to go on and see yourself at the weight you want to be when you look in the mirror. And once you start believing you're already her, you will become her. You go on and start eating like if you're 200 pounds and you want to be 130, well, you can't keep eating like a 200-pound woman to get to 130. I'll have a lady say, I'm starving to death. You ain't starving to death. That 200-pound woman might be because you had to reduce your rations, but that 130-pound girl, she's ready to break out of there and live a little bit. Uh -huh. You know, so these things are principles and they work. You've got to have a why. You need a pleasurable why and you need a painful why. I've got uh, a vision tracker with pictures that pop up and I'm always adding to it to, to get me motivated again, to get me fired up again. My why, my why has got to be greater than temptation to be successful. Yep, Carrie, did you hear what I said earlier? You got to believe. You got to start today. You can't wait till you believe in. You got to believe yourself now. That 130 pound girl will break out of there, I'm telling you. So my why keeps changing. I keep editing it. Now it's not so much about me. It's about others. I really get much joy out of teaching people and seeing them get their life back. Not everybody that we teach gets their life back because they don't either don't believe in it, don't like my style, uh, or they just ain't willing to put in the effort. The time's not right. But where I really enjoy is teaching somebody and seeing them get it. And it changed their life like it did mine. I've got a family. I've got children. I've got a beautiful wife. I want to do this for them. I want to stay fit for them as much as I can. Something's going to happen to all of us. That's just the facts. But I don't want it to be self-inflicted stuff. I want, to do, I want my family to know I did the best I can do. I want to be fit because I, as I grow older, I, I take up hobbies. I want to stay in the game. So I set a goal of going and getting my blue belt and that, you know, now I've got a goal to get my purple belt. And what I'm doing is I'm looking at these things and reminding myself, I don't want to go to the gym and get the tar kicked out of me because I'm not in shape. I've got all these reasons and you'll forget these things when you're looking and smelling, looking at and smelling pizza. But these are the most important things. Got a sister here who, uh, who came by the office, man, just gave us so much joy sharing with us her accomplishments in, in, in the marathon. I don't, I, in my journal, I look at foods that I love. Here I've got shellfish and collards. That's one of my favorite meals. That's exercise on a plate. And that, what that image does for me is say to me, why would I ever eat something that is wrong when I love this stuff that helps me lose weight? Another meal that I love, in other words, why would I do, why would I have a big hungry jack biscuit when I can have a carb quick biscuit? Or why would I eat the wrong kind of breakfast when I can have berries and hemp flakes and yogurt and it's delicious to me? You know, I I have these things in front of me all the time. I have my painful why. This was me after I'd already lost some weight, but she looks like I need a bra there. But anyway, I'd already lost about 50 in this picture. I was, I was feeling pretty good about myself, but now that's a painful why for me. And I look at that and I go, uh-uh, I'm not eating that. I'm not going back there. I ain't wearing no bra. I got that wife that I love at home. I'm, I'm not, I don't want her seeing me like that. No, 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 I'm not, no, not going back there. I'm going here. 
I'm going to keep working on my body. Look, look at where I've came from and to. You know, I, I'm really – I'm proud of myself. I can finally go to the beach and take my shirt off. I used to would never go to the beach and take my shirt off. I'd even get in the water with my shirt on. Wasn't nobody going to see me. How much my life has been enhanced by feeling better about myself. I don't want to be on medications anymore. And when I click play in my vision tracker, these things play. And this guy right here is not going to beat me. This is pain. He's the one that's tried to steal, kill, destroy me, and I ain't going to let him. He's got to go. Burn in hell, you monster. Travis, you just be being silly. No, this stuff's real. He's real. That's the problem. All right, so come up with your why. The pain of daily self-discipline weighs ounces, but the pain of regret weighs a ton. You're going to have to live with one or the other. You're going to have to live with daily self-discipline. It's your choice. You're a grown person. You're going to have to live with daily self-discipline, or you're going to have to live with regret. It's one or the other. Right now, many of us are living with regret because we fail to live with self-discipline. Watch out for the diet devil. People will try to tempt you. People will try. You need to, you don't need to let people in the world change you. You need to change the world. All right, so our program. What's different about the program? A lot. First, we bless the name of the Lord. Amen. But there's a lot different. What we've done is take basically sports nutrition, put it together in a package where people can lose weight, maintain muscle mass or put on muscle mass depending on their goals most everybody listening right now your goal is to lose body fat so we have to understand what allows us to lose body fat and we must also understand what causes us to put body fat on well obviously overeating uh, but there's some other things that are more important than the calories that you consume that work against you. And it's your hormones, right? So one hormone in particular called insulin is working against you if your goal is weight loss. It's working for you if your goal is muscle gain. It's not working for you if you're trying to lose fat. So we have to neutralize insulin. In the program, if you're new to the program, we call that the fat bus. And when the fat bus comes, the fat bus does what it does. It increases your appetite. Bet you can't eat just one. It stores, you heard that commercial, right? It stores fat. So I have a steak and I have that Cheddar Bay biscuit or some bread at the Longhorns. I eat that bread, blood sugar goes through the roof, pancreas dumps a load of insulin in my bloodstream to keep me out of a diabetic coma, but now I've got all that steak fat in there and the fat bus is going to pick it up and put it in the garage. For some, that's love handles. For some, it's the booty. For some, it's a little bit all over. You know what I'm saying? So it's just going to happen. You don't have to hope it don't happen because you overate. It's going to happen. It's a natural law. It's, it's, just, it's just the way it is. Number three, efficient fat burning stops for up to 48 hours. So every time we have what we call on this program a holiday, which are allowed, we stop efficient fat burning for up to two days. So this is why we've got to neutralize the fat bus. We break calories down into the macronutrients and help you understand the macronutrients. Calories are, not all calories are created equal. A calorie is not a calorie like they tell you. Yes, one calorie is a unit of energy, but at the same time, calories of ice cream break down in the body quite differently than calories of chicken and broccoli. One elevates blood sugar, causes a, a, an insulin dump, and the other does not. In fact, the other one slows down the fat bus. So we have to learn how to categorize our foods, then how to combine our foods. We've got protein, <coughs> breaks down into amino acids, feeds and fuels the muscle. We've got carbohydrate. We've got fat. Carbohydrate's the one that elevates blood sugar. There's good carbs and bad carbs. We can have good carbs in the right combination. We can have bad carbs, or Reese's, 
we can have bad carbs on our holidays and we get six a month in the weight loss mode and we get 12 a month in maintenance. We're, we're gonna understand fats. We're gonna understand good fats from bad fats. You can cook your food in the approved fats and help yourself, it'll, it'll aid you. You can cook in unapproved fats like just plain butter. You can cook in vegetable oil, canola oil, I don't care, but it's gonna alter your food combinations because if I'm gonna eat those bad fats, which I'd rather you not, but if you're going to, we want to be certain that we're not uh, dispatching the fat bus when we have those bad fats. And then those fats will just dissipate as heat and go away and we won't have a problem. Beautiful thing. Then we've got water. Water doesn't have any calories in it, right? Best bang for your buck right there. You got to drink a half a gallon to a gallon of water every day on the program. A gallon? Well, notice what I said. I said a half a gallon up to a gallon. So if you give me a half a gallon, that's fine. We'll optimize if we go higher. So are we gonna burn fat? Are we gonna burn muscle? Well, what weighs more, a pound of fat or a pound of muscle? Well, a pound is a pound is a pound is a pound. They all weigh the same. But a pound of fat takes up twice the space on the body as does a pound of muscle. Now look at this. This is a, a illustration of five pounds of fat and five pounds of muscle. Look at the amount of space. Again, it's, in, it's scaled. <laughs> look at the amount of space. Visualize the amount of space that that five pounds of uh, fat is going to take up on your body versus five pounds of muscle. Muscle's metabolism. You, you, need, you need to keep as much muscle as you can as you're depleting in size. We do that with our food combinations. We're gonna preserve as much muscle as possible with food combining. But we've gotta starve off the fat and we wanna train our body not to burn glucose, but to burn fat. We wanna switch the gear stick there over into fat burning. That five pound fat model, has 17,500 calories. That 3,500 is saying 3,500 per pound. That's how many calories are stored in a pound of fat. So 17,500 calories stored in five pounds of fat and only 3,000 stored in a pound of muscle. So we don't want to become a muscle burning machine and not get adequate amounts of protein because if we become a muscle burning machine, we'll lose weight a lot faster, but we'll be worse off when it's over and we won't look good either. You're gonna lose all, from all over. You're gonna lose living tissue and fat, but when we eat the way we eat here, you lose the maximum amount of fat and you're better off for it. We're gonna to learn to categorize our foods. We're gonna learn what goes in category one through seven. Then we'll learn about quick fixes like meal replacements. We'll learn about approved snacks that control your blood sugar, great void replacements that I can have instead of ice cream and Reese's. In fact, we're gonna talk about, um, we've got a void replacement class coming up in a week. I think it was Cleo that requested that. We've got a um, virtual grocery tour tonight. We're gonna to talk about grocery store ice cream and such. So come join us. So we've got approved snacks, approved freebies, approved condiments. Now, you don't have to learn about the thousands and thousands and thousands of approved products that are in these categories to start with. You just learn a few. You're not gonna be, you're not gonna eat a thousand different foods this week. So don't get overwhelmed when you get inside of Planet Shibola. Because there's a lot of proof. You start start small. Category one is gonna be things like chicken breast, turkey breast, low-fat cottage cheese, Greek plain yogurt, fish, egg whites, 96% lean ground meat of any type. Category four, I'm jumping around because I'm sticking with the protein sources first. Category four, proteins plus fat, New York strip, filet mignon, whole eggs, 93% lean ground meat or better, up to, of course, 96. Chicken livers, ribs, chicken wings, you're already seeing that, yes, you can have chicken. Is chicken wings as good as chicken breasts? No, but it works on our program. Um, if you go somewhere and get one of those dry rub seasonings like lemon pepper or you want to use Tabasco sauce, as long as you portion control and eat those with a category two like celery, you're not hurting yourself at all. 
We're gonna learn also, as we progress through the phases, phase one, phase two, phase three, we're gonna learn category five fruit. All fruit goes in category five. We're gonna learn about superfoods. We're gonna learn about shellfish. Whoops, let me go back. And I want you to look at our food pyramid because this is how we build the program. You look at our food pyramid. We have water on our food pyramid. We're, our bodies are made of two thirds water. Most of the time we think we're hungry, we're really just thirsty. There he says, hot sauce with category one proteins is awesome. He's after my own heart. I love hot sauce, hot stuff. So you got water. Then we want to spend, if we're in a weight, this is a weight loss pyramid. It's based upon the situation. One pyramid does not fit all, right? Depends on our goal. So I want to be focusing my energies on ones and sevens, if I eat sevens at all. One sevens and twos. Then I work my way up the chart, learning how to combine. I can have six and fours. Those are good. But we don't want to spend as much time with fives and threes at the top of the pyramid as it narrows, right? Because those set us back, especially if we're not eating in the right food combination. As long as we eat the right food combination, that will be all right, even with threes and fives. And portion control, of course. Simple carbs is poison. Simple carbs cause a fast fat bust. There's nothing we can do to neutralize the fat bust when we eat these, no matter how bad we want it to be different. It's you're simply not able to combine proteins and fibers with these and make much of a difference because it's like taking an injection of sugar. It's not like digesting food that has naturally occurring sugars. It's like taking a needle of sugar, water, and putting it in your vein. So when we have these foods, if we're in the weight loss mode, we just count it as a holiday and move on. It's not bad to have a holiday as long as you don't go over your allotment of holidays. Sugar, white bread, white pasta, white rice, the whiter the bread, the quicker you're dead. Chips, Cokes, all their kinfolks. You should not even lick the cheese dust off a Dorito because after the lick goes the crunch, after the crunch goes the bag. So these things get us in trouble. We should avoid them. When do we need to eat them again? I, I get that question a lot, oddly. <clears throat> I tell you in class, it's poison. When can we have those? Well, you can have them on a holiday. Well, isn't it good to have them occasionally to stimulate metabolism? No. It that's like saying, does throwing water on a fire ever help it? No. It never helps it. But the reason we allow holidays is we're human beings. We're not always going to do right. We're not human doings, we're human beings. So we've got built-in days of grace in the program, but no matter how bad we want these not to be so bad, they're that bad. We can have good complex carbohydrate in the right combination, like category three, potatoes, corn, black eyed peas, navy beans, limas, peas, turnips, sweet potatoes, Whole wheat bread, whole wheat pasta, long grain brown rice, quinoa, oatmeal, grits, green peas, and many, many more. We just got to learn how to combine the right food. So if I'm craving a potato, I know what to put with the potato so it doesn't do me any harm. Category two, fibrous carbs, broccoli, asparagus, squash, bell peppers, cabbage, Brussels sprouts, green beans, lettuce, green leafy vegetables, celery, and we could go on and on and on. Category two, fibrous carbohydrates, also help shut down the fat bus along with a lean protein. And it's great for your, your uh, how should I say it? Uh, life and death begins in the digestive system. It helps your digestive system, okay? It's good for you. Lots of insoluble and soluble fiber. It's, going, it's very, very good for you. So you want to get that in, not just to shut down the fat bus, but because you need that roughage to help get rid and eliminate undigested matter from animal products. There's a lot of other reasons, full of antioxidants, full of nutrients. So you need to eat your veggies. Quick point about veggies. 
Uh, all category two veggies are freebies unless you cook an unapproved fat into them. Then they're just a simple, you know, category two, and you see the big four floating over the plate. Uh, there are category two breads that break down more like a green bean than they do break down like a white bread. So our database is full of breads from hot, you'll see a few more tonight in the grocery tour from hot dog buns, hamburger buns. So here's just a few to give you an example. Brand crisp bread is a freebie. You can have unlimited amounts of it. The other breads are not freebies. Nature's own double fiber wheat bread, La Tortilla Factory 50 calorie tortilla, Thomas Light muffins. There's so many breads approved that have enough protein and fiber in them to help offset the fat bus that now we can have our hamburger. I literally can carry a survival kit with me. I can go into Burger King, order a Whopper. Not the best thing to do, but that's where I'm at. Say, that's where I'm at. I'm there with the, you know, somebody had a, uh, took Granny to Burger King, put the little King hat on her head and had a birthday party at the Burger King. I got to be there and I don't want a salad. So I get a Whopper. And I take that meat off the Whopper bread, throw their bread away, and put it on my Thomas Light muffin or my Healthy Life hamburger bun. I ain't done myself no harm. I didn't help myself. Sometimes the program, it's a lifestyle. It's about management. I don't want to hurt myself, even though this isn't helping myself. Going to the tortilla, Larry says, big difference. Moving from bread to a tortilla. We prefer brand crisp first. Then um, I would probably make a case for some of the no foods products, bread products, crackers. And then I would say La Tortilla Factory 50 calorie tortilla and the Olay Wellness uh, 50 calorie. Um, you'll help yourself if you'll move to those. But we can have approved breads. Just got to gotta, gotta watch it. Still got starch in it. Even though there's enough protein and fiber to do a good job of offsetting it. All right, then there's the approved cooking fats. I've already said we can use any if we know how to combine our foods after we've added the poor, the bad fats. What we'd really like you to do is use a zero calorie cooking spray or 100% zero drag MCT, 100% MCT oil. We have a brand zero drag. You can use other brands if you don't like our brand. Just make sure it's 100% MCT oil. That stands for medium chain triglyceride as opposed to olive oil or vegetable oil long chain triglycerides. These are utilized so fast upon consumption, they have almost zero propensity to wind up on the body as fat. Whereas a traditional fat, even a so-called healthy fat like olive oil, is gonna be easily stored as fat. Because it's, it's not, if you, especially if you consume it with carbohydrate, the carbohydrate's gonna be used before the, the long chain triglyceride and it's already in the form of fat, therefore more easily stored as fat. So we prefer you use our approved oils. We go over those in the daily doses, watch the daily doses, take the test, pass the test, earn the badge. Condiments, we can flavor our foods with all kinds of condiments, probably literally hundreds, maybe thousands of approved condiments. You have foods that are condiments, avocado, carrots, um, different types of cheese, nuts, seeds, olives, onions, tomatoes. These are great ways to flavor our foods with just a little bit, just a little. You've got reduced sugar ketchup, Dale's steak sauce, Hershey's sugar-free syrup, Stubbs barbecue sauce, uh, sugar-free Mrs. Butterworth. Um, you got the uh, fat-free and even some sugar-free coffee mates. You got fat-free Ready Whip. Um, a lot of people will say, I can't eat that processed stuff, then don't. We shouldn't have a problem anyway if you're not eating anything processed. So sometimes it's sneaking in your mouth anyway. And what you're really saying is one day I'm going to go completely clean. Well, you can do that with this program and I'll help you do it. In fact, in the relapse and reloaded group over the coming weeks, I should just say the gold member uh, access, we're going to be teaching on what a divine day is, which is a completely clean eating day. And we won't be having Hershey syrup sugar free. But here's the point. These foods that get a bad rap, they're not nearly as bad as the medications you're taking for blood pressure, diabetes. So why not use these for, on a temporal basis to help you enjoy your new lifestyle 
and to and and lose weight because these do not put weight on you. I don't care what they say. Uh, diet zero calorie foods may not be the best thing for your wellness long term. There's better than prescription medications you're on. You hardly wisdom with me, but they're not. They zero calories is zero calories. All right, they've done study after study, legitimate ones not the fake nutritional news you see out there where it's been shown over and over and over. The reason people gain weight drinking diet sodas is not the diet soda. The reason they gain weight is not because it's messing up their hypothalamus. They gain weight because they went, well, I had a diet Coke. That means I can have a few more calories. It's all about behavior. Y'all we got to figure that out. There's freebies, there's tons of them. To give you an example, things when, when the cra your mental and uh, emotional cravings get the best of you, mental weakness, it gets the best of me sometimes. You can have something to munch on, like crystal light popsicles, sugar-free jello, candy creek lollipops, egg whites, brand crisp or fat-free cheese. So there's a list of those things. One of mine at night when a mental craving, my mental weakness gets the best of me, is I'll have bran crisp with fat-free cheese and sugar-free jelly. Just something to munch on, you know? There's all kind of approved snacks. You've got peanut butter bran crisp, low-fat cottage cheese, powder ranch dressing and celery, uh, help smart peanut butter pat patties as a replacement for Reese's. A chocolate bar is a replacement for Nestle Crunch Bar. Bonitos are delicious. You've got them instead of Doritos. Anything you used to have, there's a void replacement for it on Planet Shibboleth, even a donut. Uh, Shibboleth brown bread. High, uh, Nancy, uh, high-protein brown bread is a category one plus two. It's not just a two. It's a one plus two. You can eat it as a standalone because it's just, it's just protein. It's not going to hurt you. I forgot to mention that one. That would probably be second best. Not, it's new to me. So I forget about it. it, but it's probably the second best behind Bran Crisp instead of the no, no line. The Bulletproof Shield, the lifestyle, the lifestyle. We filter all this information through our daily method of operation. This is, this is where the discipline comes in. I have to drink my water, half a gallon to a gallon a day. I must journal. If I bite it, I write it, I hog it, I log it, I nibble it, I scribble it, I drink it, I ink it. I have to eat in the right food combinations to control insulin. I have to portion control my foods right. I put my hands together, interlock my thumbs, put my hands over my, neat, my neatly plated meal, not piled up. <laughs> it's no thicker than the thickest part of my hand. And I can see some plate underneath it. I'm not a hog and I'm not putting it in a slop trough. So I'm putting it on plate because I'm a human, human being and I'm going to eat. And I eat my rightly portioned meal that fits under my hands. If I can't see any sticking out around the edges, that's just right for my little stomach in its natural state. I can have seconds four to six hours later. Right? We have breakfast for the Father, lunch for the Son, dinner for the Holy Spirit. Try not to snack. Try not to have freebies. We don't like to graze. But if I have moments of mental weakness, they're there available for me. Then you've got your timing. We spread our meals out four to six hours a day. Six hours is, is more optimal than four. Uh, even three is acceptable. We don't, we don't penalize ourselves for screwing our timing up. If I mess any of the other rules up, it's a holiday. Timing, as long as I only have three meals, it don't matter if you had one at 4 p.m., 5 p.m., 6 p.m. That's not optimal, though. You want to spread them out takes uh, eight to 12 hours to even get close to digesting the preceding meal. And we're already eating even at six hours before uh, that meal is really digested. That's why I, most days now I intermittently fast. So I'm sorry, Tabitha. I hope everybody else is still okay on Zoom. I hadn't checked in a little bit. So that's our Shibola Shield. Now, rather than go through the other illustrations for time sakes, I'm gonna pull up some combinations and we're gonna talk about them. Let me pull out of here for just a second and check on my Zoom people as we wind this thing up. 
I like it. I see some positive affirmations. Is, are y'all doing okay on Zoom? Is anybody still with me? Had some, had Tabitha got kicked out. All right. Y'all are still with me. Awesome. Y'all, is this helping? You getting some good, uh, good stuff? I want to, I want to share um, a couple of things with you before you go tonight, and then I'm going to get ready for the nine o'clock virtual grocery tour. Don't worry about getting it all, learning it all tonight, right? You do this through repetitious teaching. We have to hear things over and over and over. This program is so effective. Everybody wants it watered down and shortcuts. It will never work that way. This is a lifestyle where somebody that knows the lifestyle is handing it like we, we were taught when we were children. We're handing it to, to you and saying, here's what we believe in. Here's what works for us. Okay. So that's what we're doing. All right. So let me, I'm going to pull up a couple of things. Uh, I'm going to do it in reverse order because I want to show our new people. I've got a getting started thing that might help tonight, <clears throat> but I want to go over some combinations. Let me get them pulled up. Bear with me just a second. All right. Okay. You'll see combinations out there illustrated in several ways. We have an advanced set of combinations and we have a beginner set of combinations. In your online journal, you'll see tabs, food log, favorite meals, favorite food, favorite recipes, perfect food combinations. That's in your journal. These are, if, these are your phase one combinations. And you can see fastest weight loss and then just fast weight loss, because all weight loss is fast. Then we've got another combination card that expands on that with some blowtorch ones and some that are really good too. Some of them are the same, but this card, there's even another section to it you can't see right now because there's more than 24 food combinations that we can utilize in our new lifestyle. What we suggest new folks to do is start right here real simply. And then people will say, well, that's a low carb thing. That's not what we're after. We just want to get you started in the right direction and then later you learn how to incorporate category three, see over here, and category five. We want you to know how to add three different categories to a plate. We want you to learn all this so that we can control insulin and keep you in efficient fat burning. But when we're starting, again, we can't eat 50,000 items the first week, right? So we don't need them. Don't worry about what you don't know. Focus on what you do know. And you get, you get the meal options that we send you. You get a meal planner. You get one-on-one -on -one mentoring if you still need help coming up with meals. But it really is this simple. Once I learn to categorize food, I look and I say, okay, I'm tasting a pork chop. Not breaded unless I'm using approved breading. If I'm using approved breading, TVP, carb quick flour, almond flour, coconut flour, if I'm using those, that's fine. But it, let's just say I'm tasting a pork chop. Well, that's a category four. A pork chop's a category four. So I look over here in my chart and I see I can have a four plus a two. So I'm gonna have a pork chop and I love mashed cauliflower. I make it taste just like cream potatoes. So I'm gonna have I want, a, I want something that tastes like a potato, so I'm having mashed cauliflower recipe with pork chop and some green beans. So I got my pork chop fits under one hand, and I got my mashed cauliflower and my green beans under the other hand. My hands cover it. That's a solid meal. It works. Travis, I don't do good with the hand rule or six to eight. I need calories. 
Well, if you're going to count calories, if you're a calorie counter, you don't have to be, but you want to keep those meals three to 400 calories or you're not going to lose weight. The sweet spot's 300 calories. When you start getting, when ladies, when you start getting over 400 calories in a meal, if it's combined right, you won't necessarily gain weight other than the, the heaviness of the food until it's digested. Because a lot of people don't realize if I drink a gallon of water and I don't go pee, my weight's gonna be up eight, eight plus pounds when I get on the scale till I pee all that out or it evaporates and I, my body uses it up, my body temperature uses it up and it vaporizes when I exhale, right? So stay with me for just a minute. So if, I, if I'm a woman and I get to 400 calories in a meal, you won't have to worry about it if you use our portion rule in the right combination. But those of you like to eat a little more on the plate, when you get to 400 calories, most of the ladies is going to see more of a maintenance kind of experience that day. Guys, 500 calories. You start getting to 500, you're going to see more of a maintenance kind of day that day, which is still fine because we're doing this as a lifestyle. If I have weight loss days and maintenance days, let's do the math. That adds up to weight loss, right? Okay. So you might, you might be, more, be more confident tracking your calories. Just saying. So let's look a little further. Let's say now, uh, Travis, I don't like I don't like that dad burn mice cauliflower. I ain't, I ain't a fan of it. I just can't get it out. It tastes just like taters, but I just can't get it out of my mind that it's cauliflower. I want a tater. All right. Well, we get us a tater, and we we have rules about a half a tater. So let's see where a tater is. Here's a tater. It says. Seven two three. What would be a seven two three? So I'm gonna have me some shrimp scampi recipe. I'm gonna have me some broccoli, and I'm gonna have me tater, and I'm gonna dip my broccoli in my scampi juice. That's seven two three right there, y'all. Well, Travis, I don't like shellfish. It's against my religion. Can't eat shellfish. Says uh, says in the Old Testament not to eat it. All right, so let's go to one two three. You can have a one, two, three, because there's a tater again, number three. I got to control the portion. A quarter cup, if you don't like the hand rule, a quarter cup is a good weight loss portion. That's 12 teaspoons. It's a lot. You just don't sound like that. Or I can have up to a half a cup of tater if I ain't interested in losing weight and just interested in maintaining that day. So here I have my chicken breast. I have me some uh, okra, chicken breast and some okra. I breaded my okra with carb quick there. So I got chicken breast, breaded okra, and I got uh, my tater. Boom. Now, we have a little different situation. We go out to eat. We do have a uh, restaurant guide, right? But you, do you really need it if you've mastered this? Not so much. So I go to the restaurant. Where do I want to go? Where do I want to go right now? Uh, I'm trying to think of the restaurant. Where y'all want to go? What what restaurant y'all want to go to? Somebody give me a restaurant. Olive Garden. Yeah, Amberly picked out like the hardest one ever. <laughs> but that's all right. So I ain't eat there in years. Let me think this through. So I go into Olive Garden. Best I remember last time I was there, they had like his chicken breast and pasta and broccoli that I could get. So there, they've got, they used to, I hadn't been there in years, had a whole wheat pasta. So I would ask them to gr dry grill my chicken breast, no fat, no oil. I want whole wheat pasta that, and they'll accommodate you. I don't want my, any fats in my pasta. And because you're eating out, you can flavor it better at home, but you're eating out. So I have the chicken breast, no sauce. I want it dry grilled and seasoned. I've got my broccoli. I want it steamed and I got my whole wheat pasta. And I'm going to put just a little marinara on the pasta. Here's the problem. They bring you a big bowl of pasta. You can only have a quarter cup of the pasta. So they say to you, well, no, we've got fat 
already, we, the way we do our chicken breast, we're not going to dry grill it for you. And our broccoli's already made up, and it's got a little hint of oil on it. No problem. Hold the pasta and let me have the chicken because we just changed it, right? Now it's got bad fat cooked into it, and it's like there's a four on the plate. So I got to look over here where the fours are. And there's no four and a three. There's no four and a five. Can't have that car carbohydrate with a four. And they've cooked bad fat into my chicken breast, which turns it into a four. So what I got to do is have my chicken breast, tell them I'm going to eat a little bit of that endless salad bowl there. Bring me a little bowl so I don't eat too much. I'm going to have a little endless salad there with the little oil and the vinegar and oil dressing, chicken breast and broccoli. You just have to pay the price and not have that pasta if they cook fat into it because you're eating out. So when you're eating out, you just have to assume every, you just got to eat like everything's a four and a two till you lose your weight. Then we go into maintenance and we can be a little more liberal in our approach when we're eating out. Or you could just simply go to the food guide, the restaurant guide, check it out and see what it says we can have at the Olive Garden. It's in there. Cheddar's, I think Cheddar's is in the food guide, but that's an easy place to eat if you got discipline. What happens is we try, we tend to behave like Adam and Eve in the garden. Cheddar's has got tons of stuff. They got broiled fish, all kind of category two vegetables, grilled chicken. They got salmon. They got all kind of things at Cheddar's. The problem is we look around at the things that we can't have. So we got to focus on what we can have and not on what we can't have. And we'll enjoy it. Enjoyment's enjoyment. We eat the food, we enjoy the food, and it helps us lose weight. Or we eat the food, we enjoy the food, and it causes us to gain weight. Do you want joy and weight loss, or do you want joy and weight gain? See, it's up to you. Two more things before we close out, because I went over my time, and I apologize. What is a hemp hearts, hemp flake? Uh, HHF is hemp hearts or hemp flakes. Hemp hearts or hemp flakes. I think there's a good video in the library to watch to get more details about hemp hearts and hemp flakes. That looks like this for me. Um, I like shellfish. So I might have, there are times that I have um, like shrimp and scallops. If I find them on sale, bay scallops, shrimp, I put a little Obey seasoning, a little ghee butter in my pan, and I, I'll, I'll pan sear my shrimp, my scallops, and then I'll put two or three tablespoons of hemp flakes on top, and that's all I'll have. And that is a blowtorch kind of meal. That will blowtorch the fat off your body. That makes sense. Hey, Melanie, how you doing? Hey, Lee, hey, everybody. Any other questions? One more thing before we go. This might be a help to some of our new people. If it is, let me know and I'll email this to all y'all that registered. But this is a thing I done some time ago because new people say I just get lost on the planet. Well, don't take shortcuts. Just because you a member who's been doing it two or three years, it, it's like drinking water from a fire hydrant, right, in the beginning. And especially if you're dealing with, with some of us that's been doing it a long time. So don't take shortcuts. Go back to the basics. First, please learn the phase one program. Don't go any further till you do this. Watch the daily doses. Take the test, pass the test, earn the phase one badge. Learn to portion your meals. Follow the meal suggestions that you get in your starter email. If you're not happy with that beginning variety, you can go to the meal plan generator and generate a meal plan. Keep generating meal plans until you have enough variety for your liking. I recommend that you start with Three examples of breakfast you like, three examples of lunches and dinners, and just focus on those six meals during the week, your first week, or your restart week. Average weight loss, seven to 10 days, is around five to 10 pounds. After that, about 1% of your body weight a week. 
You want to move faster? Maybe you start with coach mode meals. Those are the, the best fat burning meals. Coach mode has a drop down box list. If you turn coach mode on in your journal, then what that's saying is only eat from the drop box list or it's a holiday. So in other words, instead of you having options, you don't have options except for what's in that drop down box list. And you can choose just those meals. Again, if you don't choose from the drop down box list and you don't eat in the right time and it forces a holiday on you, but what the coach is doing is trying to coach you to success. It makes the program even more restrictive to ensure that you have great weight loss because it makes you eat certain meals it makes you spread your meals out. There's a timer when coach mode is turned on. So here's just what this form is, is steps. Anytime you get lost on the planet, it's steps that if you just say, all right, let me forget everything everybody's trying to teach me. Let me go back to the beginning and watch the daily dose of take test passes. And you go one step at a time learning the program this way. This is, this is the, I'm biased, but this is the most robust, robust program on the planet. We may not be as big and pretty and have millions of dollars to spend on advertising and celebrities, but as far as the content, biggest one on planet Earth. There's none that even rival it. Promise you, conceptually. So you, you may get lost in the sauce. Let's go back to the beginning. Hope that made sense. Worst case scenario, what do you do? You go, I'm going to type it right here in Zoom. You go to mentor.genbook.com and you ask one of our great people, you schedule an appointment with them and you ask them to help you get back on track and they will. Any questions or comments tonight before we go? We gotta go get ready for a grocery tour, virtual grocery tour. What is HHF and blowtorch column? Uh, it's hemp hearts, hemp flakes. That's what that stands for, hemp hearts, hemp flakes. Hemp hearts are a category six superfood. Hemp flakes are a category one plus two. I love them. I love to have hemp hearts or hemp flakes or a little of both on a lean protein or a category seven shellfish cooked in an approved fat, portion controlled. That's my best weight loss days. Thank you, Linda. Thank you, everybody. I'm on day five and I dropped eight pounds, super motivated. That's the way to go, sis. That's amazing. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. I love doing the live videos for y'all. Just keep letting me know what you want to see. On the schedule, here's the upcoming schedule of the live classes. I think that's right, travismartin.tv. That's got your live class schedule, and you can see the upcoming ones on void replacements and some other topics. But you can also let us know what you want to see. Cleo let us know she wanted to see something on void replacements, and that's what we've got coming up here in a few days. Let us know what you want. we got one coming up on maintenance. Let us know what you want, and we'll, we'll do a great lesson for you help you be able to live the Shabbat lifestyle even more efficiently. Thank you, Beth. Y'all mean the world to us, not just to me, to all of us. We appreciate you and we love you and we just want to help you. We'll try sweet, we'll try shock, we'll try whatever. <laughs> Good deal. Understanding better makes my heart so happy. That's all we want. Anybody else? All right, well, we'll just say aloha and I hope to see some of you at nine o'clock, but if not, I'll see you again later in the week. God bless you. Bye-bye everybody. Uh, HHF, this is for Judy Williams. HHF isn't a numerical category. Um, it's hemp hearts and hemp flakes is what that stands for. So if you have a one plus HHF or, or a seven plus HHF, you can always use hemp flakes as a one plus two and hemp hearts as a six, category six. 
The reason I separated it is because I got where they were, for me, a category in and of themselves, and I experienced my best weight loss results eating one plus HHF, seven plus HHF, and I would intermittently fast. I'd have two meals a day and then maybe a bio coffee to keep my blood sugar up. Great results that way. Felt better than ever. Still do it. All right, y'all. Bye. Talk to you later.